welcome to the first episode of the Get Fit Guy, featuring your quick and dirty tips for shaping up and slimming down. My name is Ben Greenfield, and each week I'm going to be telling you the best ways to get fit. Whether your goal is to burn fat, have more energy, be stronger, or maybe just not get sand kicked in your face at the beach. In today's episode, you're going to find out which cardio machine at the gym will burn the most calories the fastest. And you're also going to learn how to properly use each machine to burn as many calories as possible. So which exercise machine will give you the most bang for your buck when it comes to burning the most calories? Let's start with the most popular machine, the one that shows up at the poshest, most exclusive health club, all the way down to the the hole-in-the-wall hotel, the bicycle. Now, since the pedaling motion of the bicycle incorporates the big and powerful muscles of the leg, bicycling is a great choice for calorie burning. Depending on your intensity, bicycling can burn 500 to 1,000 calories per hour, which ranks it among the highest calorie burners as long as you use it correctly. The problem is that many people People don't choose a resistance that's high enough to really stimulate those big calorie burning leg muscles and instead they let the natural movement of a bike's pedals do the work for them to avoid this problem and get maximum benefit from a bike you should choose a resistance that makes you breathe hard in order to achieve 90 rpm or revolutions per minute and most indoor stationary bicycles show this number on the computer display now what about upright versus recumbent bicycles, which are the type that you sit in. Though the backrest on a recumbent bicycle can relieve stress on your lower back, your neck, your elbow, and your wrist, this type of bicycle should really only be used if you have pain in these joints when you're seated on an upright bicycle. And this is because you don't make any of those calorie-burning core muscles work when you're on a recumbent bike. So here's my quick and dirty tip for getting the most bang for your buck on a bicycle. Do a few two to three minute sets in which you pedal at 90 revolutions per minute at the highest resistance at which you can sustain that pedaling speed. Make sure to fully recover between each set. This is actually called interval training, and we'll talk more about this in future episodes. Let's move on to the treadmill. Running is a full body workout that burns 600 to 1200 calories per hour. As a matter of fact, running up an incline on the treadmill is the best way to boost your metabolism for hours after you've finished a workout. Walking on the treadmill, on the other hand, burns far less calories, about 300 to 400 per hour. And the reason for this is that unless you're one of my small infant listeners, you've probably been walking for quite some period of time, and your body has become very efficient at it. An exercise at which your body is very efficient should be avoided as your primary cardio workout when you're trying to burn calories. As a matter of fact, I frequently have to point this out to every desperate person who walks through a parking lot, walks up the stairs, walks into my personal training office, and complains that they're not losing any weight with their morning walk. They walk so much the rest of the time that their body just doesn't get much of a metabolic boost from walking for their cardio session. So here's your quick and dirty tip for the treadmill. If you're using a treadmill, then either jog or use an incline, but avoid the common mistake of choosing a ridiculously high incline, then holding onto the handrails to keep up. You may look like a champion Everest ascender, but the fact is the rail should only be used if you have extreme balance difficulties, or you must stabilize yourself to change a setting. Remember to vigorously pump your arms too, as long as you can pull that off without smacking any nearby treadmillers in the face. Let's move on to the elliptical. Now, unfortunately, the computer on most elliptical trainers overestimate the actual number of calories that you burn, especially if you lean against the railing for support. You can generally burn about 600 calories per hour on the ellipticals that don't include arm movement, and slightly more on the ones that do. Using the elliptical burns fewer calories than running because, similar to the bicycle, once you get the parts on an elliptical machine moving, they're pretty easy to keep moving, and so you expend less energy. When it comes to calorie burning, the two most common mistakes made on the elliptical trainer are leaning against the rails excessively or inadequate resistance. So to get the most benefit, use those rails as little as possible and challenge yourself with the resistance settings. Shoot for a cadence or stride rate of 120 to 140, 
Similar to revolutions per minute on the bicycle, you'll find this number on the computer display of an elliptical trainer. My quick and dirty tip for the elliptical is this. Choose that resistance that's actually high enough so that the machine isn't doing all the work for you. If you don't feel your muscles contracting during the forward and back stroke of the elliptical, they probably aren't. Now how about the rowing machine? It's an incredible upper and lower body cardiovascular challenge and can burn over a thousand calories per hour. Just ask Ben Hur. But this quasi-torture device can also be nauseatingly boring when you try to go for long periods of time. So, to make time go by faster while still maintaining a high intensity, incorporate short periods of very hard pulling combined with easy pulling. For example, row for 250 meters as hard as possible, then 100 meters easy, and repeat that 6 to 8 times. Be sure to use as many body parts as possible when you're rowing, including your torso and your legs, not just your arms. Here's your quick and dirty tip for the rowing machine. It's actually pretty easy to throw out your low back if you don't know what you're doing. So look at the little diagram that appears on the instructional panel of most machines. See how it shows a little stick figure pulling with the whole body, including the upper back and the legs? Make sure you do what that stick figure is doing. Finally, let's discuss the Stairmaster. Sorry, Jane Fonda, but I just don't have much praise for the good old Stairmaster. It incorporates tiny, teeny calf muscles and just a little bit of your backside and butt, but really won't give you more than about 400 to 500 calories per hour. In addition, anybody who has low back pain will almost surely find it aggravated during that straight up and down spine compressing motion of the Stairmaster. Now for you stair lovers out there, I do have good news. You know the stairway to nowhere, or as I had one client describe it, the stairway to heaven because you feel as if you're about to die? Yeah, I'm talking about the moving belt of stairs that actually makes you climb a stationary staircase. That will give you just as much calorie burning benefit as running up an incline on a treadmill, but it is definitely not for the faint of heart. Here is your quick and dirty tip for climbing stairs. Use the trick of holding a small set of one to three pound dumbbells in either hand as you climb for maximum calorie burning benefit. Now, of course, there are many additional forms of cardio, but for maximum calorie burning, no matter which form you choose, be sure to incorporate a form that's inefficient or unfamiliar to your body. So if you always walk, try switching to cycling or using the elliptical, or if you always run, try the rowing machine. Keep throwing those cardio curveballs at the body and you'll burn more calories and lose that weight more quickly. And of course, most importantly, have fun when you're exercising and resist the temptation to leave all that sweat on the machine as a testament to how hard you've worked. Nobody else needs to see that. If you found these tips helpful, you're going to love the Get Fit Guy newsletter, which is packed with weekly practical tips, videos, and more. Just head over to the Quick and Dirty Tips website at quickanddirtytips.com and you'll find everything you need to get that free newsletter, along with a handy tool to ask me questions about getting fitter. So until next time, this is the Get Fit Guy signing out. I'll be back next week to tell you how to get started with weight training. But until then, what are you waiting for? Go get fit. Get fit.